Okay, so get this. Everybody loves The Sims, right? Yeah, a classic. But what if I told you there was a game way back in 1985 that basically invented the whole virtual life thing? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Today, we're diving into little computer people. Hmm, little computer people. I know, right? We've got YouTube videos, old game reviews, even Wikipedia to help us uncover the story of these um, digital dudes, I guess you could call them. So what makes this game so special? Was it like an early version of a Tamagotchi? Actually, it was way more than that. Think house on a disc, like a whole simulation running on your old Commodore 64. Oh, wow. And here's the thing. Each copy of the game actually generated a unique little computer person, an LCP for short, with its own name, look, everything. So no two people were playing with the same little guy? Nope. Every LCP was one of a kind. That's really interesting. You feel like that pet rock craze, you yeah. know? But instead of a rock, you have this virtual house with this little person living inside. I see it like a digital ant farm, but with more personality. Exactly. You could watch them play the piano, read books, even write you letters. It wasn't about beating levels or anything. The joy was just in observing and interacting with this tiny virtual world. So that was the appeal, just watching these little guys go about their day. Yeah, and I think it really resonated with people back then. Remember, this is 1985, pre-internet, pre-social media. There's this really novel idea to have this little digital being that was all yours reacting to your actions. Ah, so it was almost like an early form of social connection in a way. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. But these LCPs weren't just mindless bots either. They had needs, you know, like they needed food and water. And what happened if you forgot to feed them? Well, let's just say it wasn't pretty. They could get sick and eventually. Oh, no. So there were consequences for neglecting your little friend? Yeah. But if you were a good caretaker, you could build a real bond with your LCP. Interesting. So it wasn't just about keeping them alive, but also about understanding their moods, their personalities. Exactly. They could be happy, sad, even grumpy, just like real people. So how did you actually interact with them? I mean, this was way before The Sims, so you couldn't just click and drag them around. Right. You had two main ways. You could type in requests, you know, like, please play piano or please write a letter. And they'd understand you. Well, sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was all about figuring out their personality and how to communicate with them. It's kind of like having a really tiny roommate. Uh, your big pixelated roommate. Exactly. Yeah. But seriously, this idea of typing requests, it seems so simple now. But it was revolutionary back then. It gave you this sense of agency, like you were really communicating with this digital being. Wow. And what was the other way to interact? That was through what they called direct actions, like using control commands to say, give them items, set the alarm clock, even give them a pat on the head. Oh, that's kind of cute. I know, right? So it was more than just giving commands. It was about building a relationship with this little virtual person. Yeah. yeah. And get this, the game even had mini games. You could challenge your LCP to poker, anagrams, even a good old-fashioned game of war. Mini games within a larger simulation? That's pretty innovative for the time. Right. And guess what? Will Wright, the creator of The Sims, was actually a fan of little computer people. He even got feedback on The Sims from the game's designer. No way! So you could say little computer people was a direct ancestor to The Sims. Absolutely. It's amazing to think that this quirky little game from 1985 had such a huge impact on gaming history. I know. And it all started with the simple idea, what if there were tiny people living inside our computers? Right. But speaking of those tiny people, I've always wondered how each copy of the game generated a unique LCP. Was it just random? It was a lot more complex than that, actually. David Crane, the game's creator, was a genius when it came to programming. Oh, how so? Well, he designed the game so that the serial number on each copy would determine the personality and behavior of that specific LCP. Really? So he wasn't just using some random number generator. He was coding specific personalities based on the serial number. Yep. He wanted every player to have a truly unique experience, to create a whole digital society where every LCP felt like a distinct individual. Wow, that is seriously impressive, especially for a game made in 1985. He was basically coding digital personalities by hand, long before AI and all that stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't easy. Imagine trying to take a string of numbers and translate that into a set of personality traits that would determine how this little digital person would act and react to the player. That's amazing. And you know what else I find fascinating? 
Apparently, he almost didn't include those mini games we were talking about. Really? Why not? Well, from what I've read, he was really pushing the limits of the technology back then and was running out of time. He almost had to cut them entirely. It makes you wonder how different the game and maybe even the future of life simulation games would have been without those little card games and things. It's crazy to think about, right? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to uncover about little computer people. Like what? Well, for starters, there's the amazing music that brought those digital houses to life. And then there were those Japanese versions of the game with their own unique twists. There's a whole lot more to explore. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's uh, dive in. So you were saying something about Japanese versions of the game. Right. So there was Appletown Story for the Famicom and another one for the PC-8801. Get this. Instead of a little dude, your LCP was a lady. Oh, lady of the house. Cool. What else was different? Well, the house layout was different, especially in Appletown Story. It had this balcony up top, but it didn't have the mini games. Ah, oh, bummer. But hey, at least they tried something new, right? It's interesting how they changed it for a different audience, different consoles. Yeah, you can see how creative developers had to be back then. Tech wasn't as powerful. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you mentioned earlier that there were like 17 musical pieces in the game. Mm -hmm. That's wild for a game back then. It is. And we're not talking just some simple loops either. Oh. The guy who did the music, Russell Leavlich, he went all out. Realistic sound effects, even Christmas songs. Whoa, so your LCP could be rocking around the Christmas tree. Basically. And the piano pieces, too. Tons of variety. So not just, like, chopsticks all the time. Nah. You could hear everything. Blues, jazz, even Beethoven. Wait, hold on. Beethoven? Really? Yeah. Leibowitz did some crazy programming stuff to make the piano sound more real, less computery. So, like, if my LCP played for Elise, I could actually recognize it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Not the full-on concert version, obviously, but, yeah, definitely recognizable. Makes you wonder if each LCP had its own taste in music, like a little built-in playlist. That's so cool. This game just keeps getting more and more interesting. <laughs> so I got to ask, was there ever talk of a sequel? You know, there actually was. Really? What happened? Did they, like, run out of serial numbers for new personalities or something? Mm. That might have been a problem eventually. Nah, the original game, well, it didn't sell as well as they'd hoped. Plus, game development was expensive, even back then. Uh, that's a shame. But even without a sequel, it's obvious the game was influential. We talked about The Sims, but were there other games like it back in the day? Well, The Sims is definitely most famous, but yeah, there were others that had similar ideas. Games like Creatures or Pets, they both took inspiration from little computer people. It's crazy that a game from so long ago could still be influencing developers today. It shows you how ahead of its time it was. David Crane took a simple idea, little people in your computer, and made it something truly special. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't about winning or losing, just connecting with this virtual being, like digital friend. Exactly, and that was new back then. It led to all these new types of games where it's about the experience, not just beating the game. Like little computer people changed what a game could be, showed that people wanted something different. And you can still see that today. Look at games like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing, even Minecraft. They all let players be creative and build their own experiences. Crazy to think those ideas came from this little game in 1985. It is, huh? It's like innovation can come from anywhere, you know? You just got to take risks and think differently. Little computer people might not be a household name anymore but it definitely left its mark. It shows how much we love connecting with virtual beings, even if they're just pixels on a screen. So true. Thinking back to something you said earlier about how we'd interact with a truly smart LCP today. Yeah, with all the AI advancements and everything. That's such a cool question. Would they be like pets or friends mm. or like coworkers? I don't know, but it's fun to think about. And it makes you realize this simple game can make you think about some pretty big stuff. Yeah, it's way more than just a game, that's for sure. It's making us think about the future of technology and our place in it. That's the power of a good deep dive. Totally. Yeah. It's not just learning stuff, it's seeing things in a whole new way. Exactly. But before we get too philosophical, I have one more question. This one's been bugging me. What is it? Okay, so we talked about all the things the LCPs could do, but did they ever have to, like, you yeah, know, yeah. use the bathroom? Huh. That's a good question. To answer it, no. No bathroom breaks for these little guys. Oh, thank goodness. Some mm -hmm. things are better left to the imagination. Probably true. Speaking of imagination, there's one more thing we got to talk about. Remember that musician we mentioned before? Oh, you mean Anthony Rother and his uh, 
what was it called, Little Computer People Project. That's the one. He released a whole song inspired by the game back in the 90s. Wow, a whole musical project about a little person living in your computer? Yep. That's how much this game stuck with people. It might not have been a huge hit, but it really connected with some people. I get that. It's about artificial life. That line between technology and reality. Makes sense. You know, I keep thinking about that question of interacting with a super smart LCP today. Yeah, it really makes you think. It shows how even an old game can still be relevant today. Totally. I think it's safe to say this deep dive into little computer people has been anything but simple. We've found so much cool stuff. Yeah. And I can't wait to see what else we uncover in the last part of our deep dive. Man, what a trip back in time. We've gone deep into little computer people, seen how it influenced games like The Sims, and even thought about how relevant it still is in this whole AI world. I know, right? It's been a blast exploring the game's features, the music, those Japanese versions. Yeah. But before we say bye to our LCP buddies, I think there's one last thing to talk about. We've talked about its legacy in games like The Sims, but what about its impact on gaming overall? Good point. Think about it. In 1985, most games were all about action, points, being the best. Right. Little computer people, it was totally different. Slow, chill, almost meditative. You weren't trying to win. Just <laughs> hang out with this digital dude, watch him live his life like a virtual buddy. Exactly. That was huge back then. It opened the door for all these new games focused on simulation, creativity, and emotional stuff. Games where the journey was the point, not the ending. It's like little computer people changed the idea of what a game could be. It showed that people wanted something different, something more meaningful. And you can see that today. All those popular life sim games, Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, even open world games like Minecraft, they all give players that freedom to make their own fun. It's crazy to think that all started with a game about some pixelated guy in your computer back in 85. It just shows that the best ideas can come from anywhere, right? You gotta be willing to try new things and think outside the box. Yeah, totally. Little computer people might not be a household name these days, but it definitely made a difference. It proves how much people love connecting with virtual characters, even if they're just pixels on a screen. It's so true. And maybe with all this new AI tech, someday we'll have those super smart LCPs you were talking about. Wouldn't that be something? It would. But even without that, I think it's safe to say that Little Computer People has earned its place in gaming history. It wasn't just a cool little game. It was a pioneer that helped shape how we play games today. Couldn't agree more. So to all you listeners, if you ever come across an old copy of Little Computer People, dust off that Commodore 64, pop it in, and get ready for a trip back to 1985. Who knows? Maybe you'll even become best friends with your own little digital pal. Until next time, deep divers, keep on exploring. And never stop asking those what-ifs questions, folks. You never know where they might lead.